back to WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are in Catonsville at State Fair. Got Madonna on one wall and Eddie Vetter on the other. Former Baltimore County Executive Don Moeller. We're in the segment two with Hartford County Executive Barry Glassman. We did a lot on coronavirus, and it's uh, going to dominate our lives a couple of weeks. But we like had you here to like do the Baltimore Positive thing and talk about Baltimore and talk about Hartford County's association. I even dressed like I went Hartford right. County because I have seen <laughs> What does that mean? I tell everyone <laughs> that Harford County is the epicenter of Ravens fandom. I, I, it I is. We that. had a great rally up there. We, well, we I, had one I, of the I've biggest been doing rallies. shows in Harford right. County and up at Adams Jeep. and uh, I'm, God, every Looney's and Buffalo Wild Wings and Silver Spring Mine. These are all my friends and partners, business owners, many business owners. My accountant lives in Forest Hill. The one time I went up in a helicopter was with Paul King from King Discount Liquors in, in the heliport <laughs> up at Forest Hill. So come Very on, man. Good. I'm, I'm, I'm old so school. You know, right? you know the county, do you? Yeah. <laughs> I know every road in Edgewood. <laughs> Come on, man! I mean, the, what do I look like? I'm from Dundalk. Well, let's but, not, but but up a Hartford County, up in up in farm country, we'd have a pla well, we'd have a plaid shirt, not paisley. You know, that's <laughs> still kind of fancy. I, I read that's up fancy. on and it said sheep farmer here. <laughs> right. When I saw, yeah. And I, a guy comes in and the pay me. I would have GQ'd you. <laughs> Next time I see you, I'm gonna have to outdress you. But you are like a sheep farmer who dresses well. And we're at State Farm, and you said the last time you were State Fair. State, you said the last time you were at a State Fair, you were showing your, your <laughs> right so when i saw state fair on my list and and it's a beautiful restaurant here in and downtown but um it reminded me of the state fair they got the colors and everything so i grew up in 4-h I, I was born and raised on a small farm in hartford county so uh i came from a little village called level l-e-v-e-l the most notable thing about it is it's spelled the same way forward as it is backwards, right? <laughs> That's a, a palindrome, is that right? right? Yep, yeah. had a fire. Very good. Like it, Toby Hurrah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank it, you, Sue Mundy. Go ahead. <laughs> Jim Otto. Right. I'm going with a few of them. We had a firehouse and a, a general right. store and, and, uh, and a bunch of farms, so that Can was Can I it. sing Green Acres now? Is that the part where I'm <laughs> da -da 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 -da. So, Fresh air. So in 4-H. Fresh air. air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of playing sports and a lot of other stuff, we uh, we showed our animals and raised animals and showed them at the county fair and the state fair. So when I got out of college, I still you know had an affinity for agriculture and got a small flock of uh, sheep. And we ra I've raised sheep for about 30 years and. Every year we'd make the trip to the state fair and bring them down, take them to the shows. Something very biblical about tell, being a shepherd, tell, right? Uh, right? Tell, folks, <laughs> tell folks, Mr. Exec, just curious when you talk about being a sheep farmer. I mean, we hear it. We, we have an image of what it is. Yeah. How does one, I mean, is it what we think that you, you sell their wool? How does one make money off being a sheep yeah. farmer? So I, so I registered, you know, they're all different. Some farmers raise breed stock or good animals that they sell to other farmers. Uh, farmers uh, for a good while we sold a product called Darlington lamb so we sold lamb uh, as many farmers in the state of Maryland still number one agriculture is the still number one at, uh, industry in the state a lot of farmers have had to go to small niche markets and sell their products direct so we sold lamb for a long time uh i drove to south island of yeah. new zealand i i you know i that's okay. all we saw you know literally right yeah so we had we had pedigree sheep and uh we would raise the sheep sell the lamb uh sell to other breeders go to the state fair i did it as kind of an outlet to get away when i was in the house and senate it, nothing better than going out to the barn. You don't get any phone calls. They never complain. There's no uh, social media yeah. out there. So their animal husbandry, taking care of farming, there there is a good uh, aspect to it. It does relax you. And Bill Boniface always told me, it's got a horse farm right across from us, that, you know, for people, even people in recovery, we found out that looking at a farm animal on the right. outside <clears throat> does a lot of good for the person on the inside. And uh, uh, I've just always done that. Uh, about three years ago, I had the uh, supreme flock of Katahdin sheep at the State Fair, and that is like winning the World Series. It's the Blue Ribbon. Yeah, so I, re I retired from showing when I got my big banner. It's, wow. It's hanging in the county office building, actually, if you ever want to come up and see it. But <laughs> <laughs> Congratulate. It took me 20 years to get wow. that, and uh, uh, since then we've been trying to wind down. My schedule's gotten crazy, and uh, delivering lambs on winter nights uh, – 
coming back from the county or Annapolis got got a little bit tough. You said something interesting. You mentioned Bill Boniface, and you know, obviously, I'm I'm in the sports place, and right. we're talking about not just gambling at the state house and how we're going to gamble on these things and how they're doing it in Jersey. But your county is known for the farms and for, you know, every time I hear about why the industry needs to live, they say, hey, take a a drive up the road out of Adam's Jeep, make a left or make a right, and go see where these animals come from and what it means to Baltimore County as well, right? I mean, Don, a significant part of Baltimore County. I mean, as we get up on the Preakness and the value of horse racing here, I mean, it's everywhere where you are, right? Yeah, that's one of the reasons the last couple of years, it's probably one of those cases where I go outside of my party but i've worked the last couple of years with bill cole and a lot of the folks uh to make sure we keep the preakness at pimlico uh supported the bill last year and this year it looks like the bill's moving that will provide the funding renovation money to uh, not only to redevelop that uh, uh, pimlico area park heights but also uh, get a new track in there and keep well keep, that's a baltimore the positive preakness. thing right it is, I mean, yeah. re- well it is and it's yeah. interesting it's interesting that you mentioned that uh mr county executive because we had ted venetoulis on recently and ted was talking about his affinity for baltimore and nestor said you know we're also going to have some other county executives on here in the next few weeks we're going to have barry glassman we're going to have Stuart Pittman. and the first thing ted said was well you know Ask them about their support for Baltimore because Baltimore can't go it alone. It needs these surrounding counties. And it was interesting that you pointed out, you said that's probably one point where I break sometime a little bit with my party. You, you, you've been seen, I mean, and I, 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 you tell me if I'm wrong. I, I think my perception of you through your colleagues, through the citizenry, is that you, you're whatever is a moderate Republican. I mean, is that is that in that you're that's a fiscal probably, conservative. Right. But a moderate – are, are they oh, left? Yeah. There's not many of us left, I don't <laughs> think. But, I mean, I was even in the legislature, I, I kind of <clears> – I like to say I had my own brand. I did – you know, I evaluated, you know, the proposals and kind of did what I would thought was right or what I thought was the right Kind of approach. a unique idea, right, Ness? Uh, I, I, and, I, I, but <laughs> I'm not a bomb. I was never raised – I think it's my agricultural background, too, that I was never really raised to be a bomb thrower right. or – tear down or say something you know bad about other people because they disagree with me um did that come from your upbringing we always it say did. that come from your mom and dad it did my mom my mom and dad my dad was a quiet farmer but we um and he would get involved you know farmers get involved in land use and all the things that you do on local uh politics um but we never, you know, he never really would say a bad word about someone else or call them names or any of that kind of stuff. So I, uh, I kind of stuck to that. I think it's a good way to operate. And um, well, it served I'm, you I'm, well. Yeah, I may disagree with you, but I'm, I'm not going to call you an idiot or you know a liberal or wacko one way or the other. It's just. Uh, you know, I, I just don't like to operate that I don't think way. it's the role of government to do yeah. that. Well, I, think, I, no. yeah. I think people appreciate that. And, and I was telling Nestor. But nowadays, it's, uh, it's when, when you have it at the top and it's, you know, throughout the whole system, it gets difficult. But, uh, you know, if you've done it long enough, and, you, and I figure it's, I've done it, it's worked for me for 30 years. I'm not going to change. Well, and it's, and know, it's worked because for. Because of it. I, I have my differences, obviously, on policy right. with the governor. But there's no disputing that the governor's brand of sort of stepping outside what I'll call, somebody say there's a Republican Party and then there's a Trump Party. And and the governor pretty consistently saying, I'm not always comfortable in Trump land. And that's worked well for the governor in in the state of Maryland. Jumping back to Baltimore, as Hartford County Executive, what do you see Hartford County's role and commitment to Baltimore City? Because this is Baltimore positive. And well, the reason we did yeah. this is I live downtown, right. and I have, I mean, if you were to open my Facebook, I'll say this. I'm from Dundalk High. I met him in 1982. He's my high school guidance counselor. I would say of my, my graduating class of 85, we're all 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever right. at this point. I bet 75% of my graduating class lives in Hartford County, County, right? And they're on my Facebook, and I see their politics. I see how they feel. I see what they say about the Orioles or downtown or Little Italy or the perception of Baltimore. I see the news they watch. And they say, I'm never coming back to Baltimore, which is kind of why I went with the Raven right. thing today to kind of appeal to the Hartford County, because we need, we need you. We right. need you. We need Hartford County. We need Anne Arundel County. We need, one of the reasons we really did this a year and a half ago was I, I do fear that, 
I mean, Bel Air's nice. I go up there. I, you know, I, I was up there a couple weeks ago having happy hour. The, the notion you're going to get in the car and come into the city on a Wednesday night for a show at the Lyric or a concert at the Pier or Eddie Vedder at, at Rofo once we get through this coronavirus, that's, that's the challenge. And then when they come downtown, are they having a steak at Roos Chris? Are they going out mm -hmm. to a restaurant? Are they staying a while? Would they want to have a hotel night and walk and hold hands through the harbor? I live at the Inner Harbor, seeing less of it, hearing less of it. And it's not a Harford County thing or a Carroll County thing or a Baltimore County thing. It's a Baltimore thing where my community, the 400,000 of us you know, that live there, need to fix it so that y'all want to come back mm -hmm. down to the city for a ball game or whatever it is that makes Baltimore awesome. And we need that. We have to have that. Without that, Baltimore will perish. It is. I, and uh, although I've been in public service since I was 28, I did have a real job. I always remind <laughs> folks. I, I, did, I did have a real job. I worked for Baltimore Gas and Electric Company for 25 years. Was so. that in the city? In the city. So, so you made the commute. So I made the commute and learned a lot about the Sheep city. Sheep farmer. Yeah, when I first, uh, maybe that's where I learned to dress a little better. When I, <laughs> I know my first day on the job back at, uh, when I was at BG&E. Took we you over to Cavanaugh's menswear. That's <laughs> well, it was still Hutz, uh, uh, hamburgers. 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 Across, right, next hamburgers. To, right next to the BG&E building. I, I bought hamburgers. a couple of So you worked there. downtown for 25 years. I did. And, so um, you, made, you, mean, you know that road, right? I do. And when I first got there, of course, coming from the farm, I mean, and we had those ADC map books, and I, I looked in the back of my car. I had a stack, uh, a stack of map books to go around. I investigated um, uh, fires, causing energy, uh, gas explosions, those kind of things. So I had to learn all the city neighborhoods pretty wow. quickly. We'd get called out to to do investigations, and boy, it was eye opener. But then. Once you got into the neighborhoods, uh, South Baltimore, up north, and even on the west side, you you, be, you know, I, I started to love a lot of those different neighborhoods. The people were great. Uh, and But over 25 years, you know, I did, I've seen, by the time I left there uh, five years ago when I retired, when we left the BG&E building, we had to have a, a guard take us to our parking lot or get our vehicle Um and if there was an explosion at night, we had to wait till morning. And so th there's no doubt that the, the, this violence and the drug trade and all the things that are happening ha has had an impact uh, on folks that want to come and visit. And, you know, I hear about it up in the of county, where, like you hear people say, well, I'm, it's too dangerous. I'm not going back down there. We hear it um, all the time. It's yeah. one of the reasons. I, it's one, we keep saying it's it's sad. Sad. we can't yeah. give up. We got to yeah. go back. We got to turn the city right. around. So we, um, so I'm on the Baltimore Metropolitan uh, right. Commission, and Al Hutchison's got me on the Visit Baltimore board. Good man. Uh, we've been to Nashville, and we're beginning to go out and look at models that other cities have done to begin to uh, kind of ramp up the tourism, get more conventions in, and uh, it'd be nice to have a nightlife like, you know, Nashville, or New Orleans, or some of the areas that we visited. Uh, and I think all the counties have to participate, because we, uh, uh, I want to be active in that, because I think, as, as you know, the city has got to prosper for the rest of the state. Do you and think citizens understand that? On, uh, not on the farm, I, I don't do. mean it like that, but outside of the city, anywhere yeah, outside I of the city. I think they do, but they're just, you know, the, the violence, is, it does scare them. I mean, if you're if you're in a suburban county and, uh, in Bel Air or something, you're not used to that degree, mm -hmm. and it's constantly on the news. And uh, so that, that has to be turned around. I think that is one of the basic public policy things that, that the city has got to do, reverse those numbers. There's no doubt about numbers that. Because I need soccer moms bringing their kids down exactly. to the Science Center on a Saturday right. morning or to the aquarium or to the well, zoo or, or, or for a, a show at the Royal Farm, whatever the, it's going to be. Yeah, I visited know? the Science Center a couple of weeks ago and had lunch and, and because we, we send a lot of school children down. It, it's a great asset, but... Uh, they were telling me on the weekends now, uh, from one of the windows, you look out and see along the harbor, and they tell me it's empty, that there's, you know. I, I live across yeah. the street. And okay. Nestor looks right down on it. That's yes. the reason you got in the so, car and came down, because yeah. I see the emptiness, and yeah. that we, we, we have to change yeah. that. And, and, and that's for the city, but for, you spend so much time in the city. I think I, that's one. Yeah. I mean, it's wonderful to get to know you in, in right. that light, yeah. because I'm not sure your own constituents know no, how much time you spent in the city, <laughs> and, and knowing nooks and crannies. 
Some thoughts, if, I, I, and dare I say to a politician, yeah. if you were mayor of Baltimore, but we're going to be talking to all the mayoral candidates on April the 14th. Right. We hope everybody participates and goes back into our archives. I will be replatforming them, whether I make it to Europe in a yeah. few weeks or not. We've talked to all of the candidates. From your perspective, some, just some helpful advice from Harford County about if I transplanted you and made you the mayor yeah. of Baltimore tomorrow, where, where are those challenges for a civic leader for both of you as right. county executives that have had these jobs, yeah. you know? Don, well, Don knows, and I think numbers matter when you're looking at public safety and, and, and enforcement and patrolling. And from what I've seen, and I'm not an expert, I, I get to see kind of from the outside sure. and, and look at what they're doing. But to me, they, they really need to expand the number of officers and recruit more officers. We hear that over and over. And get more folks. Well, the police chief sat here and told us that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. literally. Beyond the strategy, I mean, just warm bodies. They, they need to saturate, uh, I think, uh, uh, the city neighborhoods with, with cops and, and um, get them out there higher and spend their money there at first, building that base uh, of getting it out. I know technology helps and all that kind of stuff, but... I really think basic, uh, uh, what I've seen in other cities is just really saturating uh, with police officers. Well, I think and the one it, thing we're all heartened by, there are models. <clears throat> I've been to Detroit. I've been to Cleveland. You talked about Nashville. These places right. where 20, 30 years ago they were a different D.C., New right. York, different communities. We, right. we need to be a part of that yeah. and, and model what they're doing yeah. in these other places. And I, I know they have the consent order and some of, some of that out there with with what the strategies and, and the, the style that they're going to use. But I still think you get warm bodies out there. You don't really need to stop and frisk and, and, and arrest everyone, but you need to saturate the neighborhoods with, with folks to, well, to do Well, it's, it's so interesting, Kenny, and you talk about and I know you're a data guy, and, 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 and when we come, we're going to get into another segment. We're going to talk about all the stuff you've done with opioid. I mean, you've been a leader on some of these big issues statewide, but one, one of the things that, that our friend, our mutual friend, Kevin Kamenitz, believed to, to his core was that the police officer in the community have to have an equal level of trust, mm -hmm. that you cannot have public safety unless the community has confidence in its officers and the officers respect the community. And I think the term that, uh, that is in vogue now that we hear from every mayoral candidate and from the commissioner is we've got to police constitutionally, constitutionally correct policing. And as you said, there's a way to do it that you can be, you can be visible, you can be prevalent, you can be all over these neighborhoods, particularly when in the city, and I'm sure it's true in Hartford County, I know we've spoken to Johnny and in Baltimore County, there are pockets where you know are your right. biggest challenges. you got to flood those areas, right? You do. As a county executive you got to make them mayor. part of the fabric, too, like you said. So they're, they're part of that community. And, and they become just, you know, everyday occurrences. You'll see the local uh, person on the beat there. And you just it's an old style, but I think uh, that's the one thing they need to do. And, of course, at Port Covington and some of the areas, they've got a lot of investment coming in on the IT. But I'm a firm believer in economic development, keeping the job base there and still – Folks that drive down from Hartford County, from suburban counties, they are vested. When they when you work downtown, you're invested in downtown. You go back home, you tell folks at church or your, uh, in your neighborhood, I work down there. It's not that bad. Come down for dinner. So I, I sleep there every night. So you, you, right, you know, I yeah. mean, and when I get off a plane wearing this, and right. people used to say, "Oh, crab cakes, Cal Ripken." Right. Now, now they have a different right. impression of what we are. In the same way that your constituents and many people in the counties that only yeah. come downtown once or twice a if year. That's all you hear. That's and and when you come downtown and the first thing you see is a squeegee boy and you have a bad experience or you have a bad experience with aggressive panhandling. Or, and I walk the streets every right. day and I can honestly say it, it's not the war zone that uh, you know, maybe Channel 45 or 13 or 11 sometimes portray it to be right. every night. It, it, yeah. But it as, we, as we get ready to go to a break, isn't it encouraging? And again, we're, we're here amidst coronavirus, people feeling pretty down about a lot that's going on. Isn't it encouraging to hear a Republican 
county executive from Hartford County being so bullish on Baltimore. That's what Baltimore positive I appreciate you, man. I would shake your about. hand, but I'm not allowed. Right. So <laughs> we thank, we, again, we have to thank our sponsors for making these great conversations possible. State Fair, Fadley's, Center Maryland, and Jeff Moeller, and Moeller and Gary Realtors. we got a lot to talk about, a lot more going on in Hartford County. I want you to describe when we come back Hartford County to folks. Nestor, where are we? We're at State Fair. We're doing Baltimore Positive. This was Episode 2. We have one more episode ahead. I want to remind everybody, Sheila Dixon, Frank Kelly, and uh, Ted Venatoulos, our most recent episodes. We'll be getting together with Anne Arundel County Executive Stuart Pittman sometime very, very soon as well. Back for more, we're at State Fair in Catonsville. We are WNST.net, AM 1570 in Baltimore Positive. We never stop telling great stories from Havana Grace and Aberdeen and Bel Air <laughs> all the way to Catonsville.